And thank you everybody for joining us today. This is our 3D solution spotlights for what's new 2018 for SOLIDWORKS. And this is, this is uh, today we're going to go over our technical communication products and really the top picks from the what's new um, for this year or for this coming year. Uh, there's quite a bit going on in each one of these products we're going to be covering. These are the highlights. I tried to include anything that I felt would really benefit um, most of you guys. And uh, we have a folder document that really covers all the little things in detail too, if, I, if you want to check that out, which I'll, I'll uh, post when we post this video on our YouTube page. I'll also have that file link there so you can see all the little tiny things that were added as well. My name is Scott Woods. I'm the product manager for our, our SOLIDWORKS technical communications products. That also goes into the visual communication products um, like Visualize. So we'll be covering that as well today. So just so everybody's aware of what products we are covering, if any of these are unfamiliar to you, I'm just going to go ahead and just run through them real quick just so everybody has an idea of what each one of these products are, and then we'll go into what the additional benefits have come for these guys. So uh, first one, so we have SOLIDWORKS model-based definitions, and really the gist of it is uh, it creates PDF documents uh, for models with PMI metadata. Uh, looking at the, you know, the little image here, this stuff is PMI metadata. So that's any kind of DIM expert data. Um, if you've ever uh, just in SOLIDWORKS you use DIM expert, you can put that visible PMI data on the model, as you're seeing here on this 3D model. Now, if you're utilizing that DIM expert data, what you can do uh, is measure out the model, put notes, uh, you know, callouts, things like that, datums, GDNT, and we can take all that information and push it out to a 3D PDF. We can also push it out to e-drawings, can print it. Um, you know, you can also do 2D layouts with it as well. So, with that, uh, some of the what's new that we'll get into for the first product here. I don't want to get into too much detail here, but just to show an example of what you get from it. So here I have uh, the callouts, and when I click on them, you're going to, it's going to highlight the areas. We have a general notes section. Also in this, I'm just using the Adobe Acrobat Player Viewer. Uh, so it's a, that free tool that most everybody has. If not, you can download it for free. You can actually put notes in here and save that in the PDF. And so it's a great communication tool as, all, as well for communicating back and forth between groups. Okay, so without giving away too much of that before we get into the what's new, let's uh, go ahead and move on to the next product. And the next one is for SOLIDWORKS inspection. Uh, SOLIDWORKS inspection is going to create uh, first article inspection reports. It, push the, it pushes that information out as a balloon drawing PDF. It also pushes it out as an Excel file, and so uh, and also any e drawings. So what we can do is for inspection. Um, here we have uh, this is just an example here where we have a Excel FAI, doc, FAI document pushed out from SOLIDWORKS inspection, and it gives us our upper and lower limits. We can key in the, the, any results that we come up with, and then we have our, our our bill of characteristics here on the right or on the left that just basically say, hey, this is from the balloon document. This will make a little bit more sense once we actually get into inspection, but you compare that with the balloon document and able to easily nearly automate this FAI generation tool. So yeah, it's really, really nice tool um, for this kind of things. All right, so, and then we get into Composer, SOLIDWORKS Composer, and really Composer, it does a lot but if you're going to reduce that down to like what is it what is it for um kind of says uh, i kind of like to break this down just a couple topics where it's technical images so it's going to be raster and vector images um so it's going to be kind of a 2d lines or pixelated images but very very technical type of images uh, it also creates a uh, and from there we create assembly instructions and operation manuals so we can also take it to the next level and do something like this where we have, this is a SVG, so it's a vector-based 2D drawing. And from here we can create hotspots. So I can say, hey, you know, I want to, you know, like pull apart that top assembly there. Um, we can use this for kind of a build materials where you can see the, the balloons, uh, compare that to the, the bomb table and the parts there. 
also I have steps where I can say, hey, go to the next step. It's going to say, uh, here's the step that we're dealing with. There's going to be these, these parts here, which is part 301. We're going to use part 200 for the pin. Go to the next step, that assembles. And then we have our, our next components for, for the step after that. And you just continue through until you build this thing. And then we go back to the main assembly, assemble these components, those components, and then have another assembly for everything, put it together. Also, Compos Composer is capable of making animation. So you can take those steps that you did, and there's a full timeline in the software that will throw it all together, output videos, um, and you'll see it's a very technical type of rendering here. And not to be confused with the next product I'm about to talk about, which is SOLIDWORKS Visualize. Now that one is for photorealism. So once we get into that, which I shut this down and open up the SOLIDWORKS Visualize, which will be the last product we're talking about today. This one, in this example, it's like a, it's a 3D environment, right? So it's photorealistic. It's, this runs on any browser. You don't have to have anything special, no plugins or anything in order to view this content. And so here I can go ahead and I can just take a look at inside this motorhome, right? I can look up, down, I can examine areas and it's all almost photorealistic. It is photorealistic. And that's what it's meant for. So for creating, you know, 2D renderings, um, well, 3D renderings, but, uh, you know, rasterized renderings like JPEGs or bitmaps, but in photo quality animations and photo quality and then virtual environments like this and we have some really cool stuff that just came this year which uh, we'll talk a little bit about as well okay so now that everybody knows what products we're discussing today uh, let's get into what is new so first off so uh, for SOLIDWORKS model based definitions we have uh, these new uh, PDF templates and what I'll kind of do with each one of these slides, just because we're covering a lot of information, I'll kind of go over uh, what has been added, and then I'll show kind of the, 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 the top picks from those in the software. So um, with these new PDF templates, uh, a lot comes with 2018 for landscape, portrait, and just a way to take your, your 3D model with PMI data and output those in real nice templates. Uh, but additional to that is these templates control the size of the text according to the size of your model. Now, if you were using or are currently using model-based definitions, you'll you'll notice that in everything before 2018, uh, you had to have different templates for different sizes because if you had a really large model, you might have little tiny text. A really tiny model, you might have this huge text. Well, these templates are much smarter and they control the size of the text per the size of the model, which is really nice. You don't have to, just one less thing you have to worry about or think about which we'll show here. Um, also, the step AP242, so this is um, for aerospace and defense industries. This AP is a, a newer kind of step 242 um, file, and it's just that PMI data, that uh, manufacturing data that exports with the step file. And I uh, just a lot of companies actually require this file format uh, if you're gonna be working with them. So um, these are this is machine readable annotations in the 3D model, and that just exports right with the 3D PDF, which we'll show as well. Um, now there's also a 3D PDF slideshow, and so you have this 3D PDF, you hit play, it plays through all the views, it's really nice. And then we'll talk a little bit about these guys uh, once we actually show the, the software here. So let's jump into, oh, exit that, and let's go to our SOLIDWORKS here. So this is SOLIDWORKS. Now, model-based definitions is part of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, it's, it's similar to what you would call an add-in uh, for the software. And once you have uh, the model-based definitions license installed on, on SOLIDWORKS, it gives you some additional uses. Now, here, if I were to, let's say, open up this top component, you'll see this is DIM expert data that's been added to the model. I go to my 3D views here, this is model-based definitions. So, I have these different views of these different elements that have been added with DIM Expert. Now you don't have to have model-based definitions to use DIM Expert. And so what DIM Expert does, uh, it's, a, it's a SOLIDWORKS tool, um, and it does similar things to the SOLIDWORKS drawing, but it does it at the 3D model level, the parts and assemblies. So in this case, we have our, 
our GDNT measurements, you can include call callouts, uh, annotations, all sorts of stuff with DIM Expert. Once all that data is on the model, then we have something usable that we can export using model-based definitions. And inspection, but we'll, we'll get to that one. Um, but here's the different, the different views um, that we have set up. So that one just has one annotation, this top view has a few, and then we have like an isometric with, you know, just kind of that angled view, we can take a look at them. They're all in 3D, so we can rotate and we can zoom in and take a look at those areas. But uh, let's go ahead and produce a 3D PDF. So I'm gonna go ahead and say publish to PDF. And then here, this is one of the new templates. You can just see the little preview here, hit this button, we'll open it up. Uh, this is one of the new templates that comes with 2018. And it's just nicely laid out. So the backgrounds, um, in the, in the template editor too, we can go through and we can really customize these backgrounds. We can customize where all these tech fields are located and customize you know, what uh, data that they're pulling in. So your custom data from uh, custom properties from SOLIDWORKS, so SOLIDWORKS parts uh, and assemblies, any of that information that's in the custom properties like material, revision, who made it, what date, all that stuff can be automated into the template where it pulls that information out and saves that out with the file. So it's very, very useful. Um, and then also, of course, the, the auto resizing of the text is a big thing uh, in these new templates. Okay, so so here, I wanna go ahead and say that these are my views, that are my 3D views here. I have all those selected, so I want to say that when I save this out, we're going to include those views in there. But then also this tool, this button right here, little checkbox, uh, create and attach the step 242. So what this file is, and actually, let me show one more thing before I export that. Um, what that file is, is the step file that will attach with this 3D PDF that can be used uh, for various purposes. So it's an it's additional file with all the PMI data. And if you have a CMM that can use step 242 data, uh, you plug that in and you get the, the results in CMM, which I'm diving a little bit into inspection, but these two products are kind of uh, they're very, very well connected, so that's why they kind of overlap a little bit. Uh, but there's one use for that, and then also for, you know, uh, CAM purposes and things like that. So uh, really useful data there. Um, this is the custom property field. So uh, the custom properties that you have of the model in SOLIDWORKS, we can go through and we can pull these in. I, I know, like, material, I know it's blank for this one, but if you had material assigned, you can click that and it'll add it to the material field. So it um, should be very, very similar to our other products, how that pulls in there. Now, if I go ahead and hit the checkbox, and I'm just gonna save this to the desktop. As you can see here, it's gonna go through and you'll see a few things on screen, uh, kind of flipping around, a lot of annotations. Just ignore that. What it's, it's just going through and it's analyzing the model and it's creating those views for the 3D PDF. Uh, a lot of sketch dimensions and things we're seeing here, so model dimensions. And then once that is finished, then we'll get our 3D PDF, and then the attachment is right in here. And I didn't even know this was capable in the standard uh, uh, PDF, 3D PDF, or even you know 2D or 3D PDF, but if you didn't know, uh, there's actually attachments in the PDF itself. And so PDFs are, cap PDFs are capable of actually containing files, which was interesting to find out. So, um, so that puts that step 242 file in the PDF and we go through and we can uh, save that. So basically extract it out of the PDF to use in other applications. And then when we look at our model here, you'll see that the annotations, and I know that this is hard to really um, show without being exp uh, exposed to it in the past, but uh, the dimensions are auto scaling with the size of the model, uh, which is just one of those things that if you've ever seen that not resize, it's, it's pretty apparent. You got this huge text and a little model and things like that. So uh, it does a much, much cleaner job now of doing that. Okay, so let's jump back to the presentation, which is here. And uh, just, oh, you know what? I forgot to show the 3D PDF slideshow. So let me, uh, let me jump back. Uh, Try to see the best way to do that would be to, because I saved it to my desktop, so let me pull it up here. All right, so one last thing I 
glazed over was this guy right here, a little play button. You hit that, and if you have a ton of views down at the bottom, it just real slowly plays from one view to the next, which would be great if you actually set these up for some kind of like assembly or some kind of operation where you wanted to look at this model in this particular order. Um, and it is nice and slow, you see, and it just cycles through the two, or through however many views you have, and it, it displays them and moves on to the next. So uh, it's a nice little enhancement there. Okay, now let's pop this back open. Okay, so the 3D PMI compare version, if you are currently using PDM, you can compare multiple files. So uh, for for multiple versions of the file to be, it has to be the same file, but multiple versions of it that have changed, and you can compare those side by side. So that's a 3D PDF file. So let's say that uh, uh, we have you know this this file, and it has multiple. PMI annotations and some dimension changed or something was removed, I will compare those and show you which ones uh, were actually adjusted or what's missing or what has changed, so things like that. Um, there's also the import of uh, PTC Crew, uh, Siemens, CATIA, STEP242, all with PMI data. That's in to, um, uh, you know, because there's no reason to have the import of SOLIDWORKS files, because you're already in SOLIDWORKS as an add-in for SOLIDWORKS, but now we can import these other files with that data and then create the 3D PDFs off of those as well. Okay, so uh, next product we're gonna go into is inspection. And so with inspection, and it's not like you have to choose one or the other when you, when you, when you purchase the software, uh, you get both an add-in for SOLIDWORKS and you also get a standalone installation application and so for instance with model based definitions there's no there's currently no standalone application for that you have to own SOLIDWORKS it it is an add-in for SOLIDWORKS where inspection you don't necessarily have to even own SOLIDWORKS to use it uh, and it installs separate from SOLIDWORKS but it also installs as an add-in for SOLIDWORKS so if you do have SOLIDWORKS of course you have a lot more uh, capability than if you didn't own SOLIDWORKS if that makes sense uh, so the add-in is the first one I'm going to talk about, and this is the one that if you if you are if you do currently own SolidWorks and you install uh, inspection, it's going to install this tool as well. And so uh, what we get is we get a inspection report uh, from a 3D model in SolidWorks. So it's quite cool because we've been waiting for this, and this is one of those things that. Uh, you know, we, we knew it was going to happen. We've been talking about it for a couple of years, and now it's here. So what that's going to give us is the ability to take a 3D model with the DIM expert PMI data on the model, just like we do for model-based definitions, but it will balloon that data so we can connect it to a an export, um, an Excel drawing, uh, or an Excel sheet for that matter that has all the bill of characteristics on it, and then we have our 3D annotated PDF, which is really, really cool. And so, yeah, and that, uh, that goes into the next one. With is, and As long as you have model-based definitions installed, then that gives you the ability to export the 3D PDF. So we can create the inspection report off the 3D model without model-based definitions, but if you want to be able to export the 3D PDF with the balloon data, uh, then that requires to be model-based definitions to also be installed. So there are, uh, they really complement each other. And we'll talk about PDM here once we show the software in action. So let's go back to, back to SOLIDWORKS. And I'm going to go op open up another file. And just this guy here. Okay, so now we get a similar model with uh, DIM export data on the model, just like that, and I want to create an inspection report from here. So in the past, in order to create an inspection report off of what you're seeing right now, we would have to bring this model into a drawing. We'd have to say, hey, show the DIM expert annotations. They pop up, create your different views in the drawing, save that drawing as a PDF and bring it to inspection, or from SOLIDWORKS in that drawing, create the, PDF, create the inspection report right off of there with the add-in. And so there was a lot more steps to get to the same end result, but now all we have to do is say, new inspection report. I'm going to use the default template for that. 
I'm going to here, and this again will also pull out, uh, just like with model-based definitions, this will pull out metadata from the custom properties of the SOLIDWORKS component. So if I said part name, um, and it works just the same way. So this is all the metadata, all the custom properties that it, that are that is in this SOLIDWORKS component. And we'll say, well, the part number is actually the description, let's say. So we'll say that, pops it in, part number, we got part number, revision. I'm just going to do a couple of these, revision, something like that. You just, you just fill these out until you get all the data that you need. So it's just a reference to the existing data that's there. And, of course, you can key things and type things in if you don't have that data as well. And uh, this here is the extraction criteria for the model. And um, it's basically saying what what dimensions are we going to be focusing on. Yeah, this is the same thing uh, for the extraction setting and then also for the GDNT, how it, how it defines that. But that's for another presentation. Um, the tolerances, uh, this is the default tolerances for this document. We can change that. We can keep that as it is. I'm going to go ahead and keep it and just say OK. And it goes through all these dimensions, all these dim expert dimensions, and it's going to balloon them. And you'll see based off the extraction criteria I had, that's why this one didn't pull out there because it's reference. So, uh, but if I would have made that for inspection, it would have done it as well. But now we get these balloons that are part of the PMI data on here. And then from here, I have a few options. So if I, I can do a 2D PDF export, which is going to, for every view that I have, and you'll see that I have my 3D views that are, that are coming from model-based definitions. I can use these as well. And then also use the standard views, like front, back, top, you know, isometric, left, right, those things like that. So any views that you have set up, we'll save those out as PDFs. And then if I have model-based definitions installed, which I do, I can export as 3D PDF. And let's just go ahead and put that on the desktop as well. So you can see it's creating those other ones based off of my, my standard views. But then it's using the ones for model-based definitions as well. It's going to go through just like you've seen before, where it analyzes each one of these views to create that 3D PDF. And that should pop up in just a second. Oh, just popped up my other screen here. And there we go. So there is the 3D model. There's all the views. And if you look, all of these are ballooned. So you have all those balloons in 3D, and say that you're you're going to be inspecting this guy, and you're like, okay, well, what's that dimension right there? Well, there's the balloon associated with it. We can type in notes just like we could before and save this PDF with those notes in there. And then going back to SolidWorks, we can take this, and we can save it as an Excel file. So here I'm going to just do my standard AS9102 AS template, and let's save to the desktop. And then from here, I have an Excel inspection report with the bill of characteristics from SOLIDWORKS. And then I just go ahead and key my results here. And I, then I use that balloon 3D PDF as my reference document. So it's uh, all linking together pretty slick. And uh, so finally, we're able to do 3D inspection reports, which is which is huge. That's one thing that I've really been looking forward to. So that's uh, that's great that we have now have that in 2018. Okay, so back to the presentation. Uh, PDM integration for projects and exports. So this is going to be integration with PDM if you're currently using PDM or looking into it uh, for inspection. So that's going to be both your inspection project, but then also the exports that you export. And then uh, so you can put those into the vault, secure them, check them out. And that's going to be for anything that's inspection related, which is really nice because, I mean, you want to secure all your data. So that is now fully integrated in 2018. Okay. Um, now we're still talking inspection. But like I said, the inspection software installs with both an add-in for SOLIDWORKS and then a standalone application if you don't own SOLIDWORKS. I shouldn't say that if you uh, want to put inspection on a machine that doesn't have SOLIDWORKS or within the same company, um, you can definitely own SOLIDWORKS with the add-in as well or the standalone. So uh, it's totally up to you how you want to do that. You can both have the same machine or separate machines that are not running SOLIDWORKS. It just doesn't require it. All right, so the standalone application, um, now we can import additional 2D formats. So previously it was just PDFs and TIFF files. It still imports PDF and TIFF files, but now we can do AutoCAD, the DWG, 
uh, file format, and also Cat5 uh, Katia drawing files will import as well. Um, so just a nice way of, if you do receive those, we can bring those in now. I know I think uh, probably 98% of all uh, interactions I have in the past are all PDFs, but just so you know, these, these now are available. And we can also import 3D formats. And keep in mind, this is for the standalone application, and that's going to be 3D XML files, um, PDC and Creo, and then the, the CAT, the CATIA files as well. So in this list, um, these are 3D models with PMI data that will come directly into the standalone application. The biggest thing I want to talk about right away is uh, Extraction Expert and Improved OCR Engine. So I kind of grouped those two together. They're technically separate from each other, but they kind of, they, they both point, point you in the same direction. So um, with the standalone, um, let me just pop it open. I think that will make more sense. But basically it's, uh, uh, it calculates over 200 combinations to pull accurate data. And so it's a lot more accurate in a nutshell. But let's go to Inspection. So here's SOLIDWORKS inspection. I'm going to go ahead and start a new project. Use that same template we did before. And OK, so what this tool now does for the, um, let's see, for the characteristics here is let's say we have a dimension. And you know what dimension do we want? And if I just box that dimension there, right, so what this did is it automatically detected that it's a geometric tolerance. Uh, units are in inches. That's just the, the, the document format. You also see this is kind of wished a little bit. I'm not sure there's, you know, basically we're trying to show that, you know, these DXF, the D, or DW, DWG files, they're not always perfect when they're sent over. And they really don't need to be because this new extraction criteria really analyzes this data and it pulls it out really well. Um, you see that it did a pretty good job of the GDT, uh, GDNT data, it pulls that out. But also like this dimension right now, I can't even see what's going on there, but when I box it, it's going to tell me, oh, it's a, uh, it's a nine inches plus or minus 0.1. If I zoom in to that area, that's exactly what it is. So before, because uh, what it's using right now is OCR, it's optical character, character recognition, and it's based off of where you're zoomed on the model. And so if you wanted to pull out information, you need to zoom, you would need to zoom into that area so it looks nice and clear so when you box it, those are OCR is like a camera, it takes a snapshot of it and it says, oh, that's a nine, that's a zero, that's a one, it puts them all together. Well, now it runs through over 200 different combinations trying to figure out what that best result is uh, based off of <laughs> some pretty extensive code. But, uh, but it does a great job in addition to that is it gets confused a whole lot less as well. So, uh, but in a nutshell, I, the inspection standalone, uh, I think the biggest thing we can pull from here is that the, the extraction criteria for the OCR is just much better. So going on to Composer, we have our SOLIDWORKS BOM import. Composer is the tool that will actually take the data um, from you know any CAD data, any, any 3D data, brings it in, puts it into a format where you can just freely move things around, add annotations, delete stuff without worrying about modifying the original design. And then from that, now we can pull in extra data. And this SOLIDWORKS BOM import, so this is like top level BOM imports from like SOLIDWORKS assemblies, and those bring in, and they're gonna compare them one by one. So whatever's in the SOLIDWORKS assembly bomb is now gonna be what's in the composer bomb. This isn't technically new for 2018, uh, but I wanted to throw it in here. So again, it's gonna import that bomb from the SOLIDWORKS assembly. It's also gonna import any appearances. So now inside SOLIDWORKS, as we take uh, our, our appearances and add them to the models, that appearance data is also going to pull over into composer. And then we have more measurement controls. We actually have a new label in there for measurement. Uh, we can actually uh, adjust the, the details of the label a little bit deeper, which we'll show. Uh, and then the last thing, just to give you a heads up what I'm about to show here, is the animation library. So you've always been able to animate in Composer, but now we can actually automate that animation and make things a lot easier. So without further ado, let's jump into Composer and show that. And here I got my import textures. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my textures in from the SOLIDWORKS data. Also, I want to bring in the 
the SOLIDWORKS build materials that bomb there. So let's go ahead and open. So while that's doing its thing, let me jump back. because so it's going to take probably about 30 seconds or so. It's going to be pretty quick. But while we're waiting, let's go back to our slideshow here. And let me talk about the animation library just a little bit. So when you're making steps in Composer, when you're making step by step, and you have you know, some parts you're bringing in, some parts you're removing, some parts you're moving uh, around adding annotations, it saves each one of those as a, as a view, as a step. As you drag and drop that into the timeline, it creates an animation. But if there's certain parts of the animation that you want to make quick without uh, without having to make the steps of it, that's where this animation library comes in. And this is another one of those tools that isn't necessarily brand new for 2018. It is much approved uh, or improved. And then also um, yeah, not a lot of people know about it. So it's good to, to kind of get that across or let that be known. Let me go ahead and go back to Composer here. Here we have the model. Let me go ahead and just make a quicker, a quick, a couple quick minor adjustments here. just want to Kind of bring that up. We'll go ahead and change the the rendering style, something like that. Uh, also, if I grab these models, I'm going to make a quick explode just to pull it apart to show what is going on in the model here. We'll save that like that. Okay. So this is the build materials that came over from SolidWorks. Now, as I take the mouse and I highlight over the um, well, enable highlighting here and highlight over the items in the bomb list here they're going to highlight in the model and that's that's the big part about why this tool is so great so uh, the ability to bring over the bill materials from SOLIDWORKS into Composer isn't just bringing a snapshot of the the Excel bomb table it's actually linking those to the individual parts within Composer as well so when I click on a model you'll see that it lists the bomb ID of each model and those are all tied to the the list here as well and so whenever you're and that's all coming over as metadata so in SOLIDWORKS as you create that assembly level build materials um, that data is going to translate over into Composer, and it's also going to update when you update it in SOLIDWORKS, which is which is huge. That's a that's a huge improvement, and it's a way to make your bombs consistent in both applications. So, and it it does a great job. Now, the appearance input, if I just isolate, let's see this component here, you'll see this had a galvanized appearance in SOLIDWORKS. That now comes over into Composer. So. Again, just a, a way to make things a little bit easier here and make things look a bit nicer because I mean, if you are spending the time in SOLIDWORKS to color your models and add textures and things like that, we want those to come over and it does a pretty pretty good job of doing so. Okay, now the other tool I want to show is the measurement tool. So if I go to my measurement options here, options here and let's do like a diameter. Um, so th this is kind of a small enhancement, but it's it's a good one. Um, there's a, now a label option or a label field in the properties, and I can go ahead and I can say you know that's a that's an auto auto alignment um, or auto orientation uh, where it's going to orientate the that that dimension um, per the line, kind of depending on what view you're on. And then also if I set that to horizontal, no matter what view I have, it's going to remain horizontal. So, um, you know, if you want to do something, you know, like, hey, that's a circle, it's a different color, and things like that. So, again, it's it's a small thing, but it's pretty cool, um, and just adds a lot more capability to the dimension tool, a lot more customization to it. Okay, um, now let's show the animation library. So, going back to this guy, and what I want to do is I want to jump into the animation timeline, which is here. Let's go ahead and hide the build material just so it's not in the way. Something like that. And now if I were to drag and drop any of these views into my timeline, like say I drag and drop that guy there, and let's just drag a couple of them in. I just want to show how we can animate easily. And so this is this is the way that, you know, it's pretty much done. 
where you have your views, you drag your views in, you create the animation, you can have a view for every step of the exploded parts coming apart, and then in the timeline we have these you know, going together based off the views. However, there's an, there's an additional way to do this, there's an easier way to do this. Uh, if I just go forward in the timeline a little bit, get a view that I like, I'm gonna make a camera there just to lock that down. And now let's go ahead and say that, um, you know, I have a couple components that I want to extract from the model. So now if I go through and I say that guy, that guy, and that guy, and we go to our workshop animation library. Now I have some criteria here. So if I said I wanted to do a motion, that means that something is gonna move. Uh, the highlight, these are things that are highlighting, flashing, kind of bring atten attention to something. But for the motion, we're gonna say motion, and I want to remove. And then you'll say that this is gonna be based off my current section in the timeline, and it's gonna be over one second. We want it to flash, maybe we want it to flash red. Uh, then for after one second, for two more seconds, so from two seconds to four seconds, it's going to translate, and then it's gonna set a transparency, so it's gonna make it uh, invisible. And then by the axis that's gonna do that is already set to the z-axis, which is great, because that's my, uh, that's my z-axis there, which is the blue. And so let's go ahead and just say create. Now if I play this, you'll see that the parts highlight red, they come out, and then they disappear, just like that. So now I can go forward maybe a second and say, well, the next part I want the same thing to do is, is this guy here, but I also want that component. So I'm gonna select that, I'm gonna select that, and I'll say create. And then we can go ahead and watch that to make sure it functions like we want it to. And it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go, it's going to disappear, and maybe a second later, and then I say, okay, I want these O-rings. And you just repeat that, so on and so forth, until you get all of your parts pulled apart. You can do this exact same thing, but in reverse for installation. And it creates, it's just a simple way to create those animations. And it's just a little taste of the animation library. It has quite a few options there. Uh, and you can control everything. So you can say, hey, we want that to flash blue, and I want it to rotate and spin and, and highlight and disappear, whatever you want it to do as it's doing it, making its movements. Okay, so that is what we got for Composer. Let me uh, jump back into the presentation. And uh, the next is Visualize. Now we are running out of time. Um, it, they added, so SolidWorks added a ton of stuff to visualize, and I, I, I want to show um, this in really high you know, detail. Uh, we just don't have the time for it today, so I'll kind of do the highlights. Uh, but on December 6th, 6th uh, it's Wednesday, 11 o'clock, we're going to have another presentation for visualize, and it's going to go deeper into um, the highlights for it and additional things that can do really the power of, of the software. So uh, if you're really interested in visualize, December 6th, I'm gonna go into much more detail. For this one here, it's just talk about the enhancements and show a couple of things. So first off is um, uh, the user interface. So the whole interface of the product has really improved. So we can go in and uh, uh, we'll show, show in a second here, but basically all the, all the buttons are a little bit different, all the placements are a little bit different. If you are a Visualize user today, it's not gonna be a huge learning curve for the new uh, interface is just cleaner. Uh, it's more like what you would expect from SOLIDWORKS and, and they did a great job at that. Now area lights, um, we'll show that a little bit today, but basically it's a way, um, this is for Visualize Pro by the way, there, it's a way to create these custom lightings in the in the environment, uh, but we give a shape to them and a distance from the model and a strength to them. And so if you wanted certain reflections in the model, as you can see each one of these light sources are reflecting a little bit different, we can use different shapes resize those shapes to then add those reflections of light into the model itself. So a uh, great enhancement there. Uh, now decal improvements, this is gonna be one of those things that I need to wait till the sixth. Um, we can show an example here, but uh, it's uh, basically, uh, it's, it's, it's a whole new tool in the application. And decals are done completely different now and they're slick, they work. All the decals from SOLIDWORKS come over into Visualize as well, which is really nice. Um, 
And then also it imports all of the SOLIDWORKS assets. So cameras, lights, um, your custom views, uh, materials, all that stuff come from SOLIDWORKS individualized when you import it. And so if you are doing that work already in SOLIDWORKS, you don't have to redo it in visualize. And this is just talking about the decals a little bit and the placement from SOLIDWORKS to visualize. So let's jump into the software, which is here. And I want to talk a little bit about the interface here. So as you can tell, if you are a current Visualize uh, user, you'll see that the interface is way different. Um, but it's it's clean. It's nice. So we have you know our preview, fast, accurate mode, um, boost, um, and power boost. If you're familiar with what those are, is uh, uh, with Visualize Pro, you can connect to a, uh, another machine on the network, a few other machines on the network, and create a cluster for that power of that machine to work with in Visualize. So as you're working, you can connect to that other machine, uh, take its CPU power, take its GPU power as you're working, and that's that's um, power boost. Um, then when you go to render it out, if you want that load of the rendering off of your machine onto some other computer, that's boost. And both of those programs come with Visualize Professional, and um, they're great, and they work the same in 2018 as they did in 2017. Uh, only catch there is if you do upgrade to 2018, you need to upgrade both Visualize on your client and also Boost on the server. They need to be of the same same version. Other than that, it works great. Uh, now, just different things like you know for model selection, part selection, or grouping. Uh, just new icons for that, and then the bucket for appearance. You know, kind of showing you, hey, we're coloring in here. It's a paint bucket. And then things like the over on the right, the the tab. Just everything's a bit more cleaner. And again, we'll we'll go into a lot more detail on this um, on the sticks. But what I wanted to show here is actually the creating of the new light sources. So if I go to add and I say new light, I'm going to go ahead and pick target. Let's go ahead and say I want this light to shine out the cup per se. Now we have this light, and for this light source. Let me go and zoom out so we can actually see it. So it's going to set it kind of off camera here, but my default comes in as a plane, where I can go ahead and I can say that this uh, this light source is going to be maybe a cylinder or a tube, or maybe I want it to be a, a, a spot or a sphere or something like that. It's going to leave it as a tube, and then I can take it and I can move it. So I can take this guy and I can move it closer to the model, further away. I can um, define, you know, how bright it is and and the reflections and everything like that. So it's just one of those really cool new tools that allow you to add light sources. But then also the reflection of light source is pretty important because if you just have a point light, it's always going to be a point in the model. If you want to kind of diffuse that over the model, do you want to do something like a tube or a flat surface or something that the light source is going to emit from? Because when light source emits from something, it also reflects that back in the model. And in some cases, that can cause, you know, an, an, an uh, you know, it just basically results that you didn't really expect or want. Uh, and this way it gives you a lot more control over that. Cool. Um, yeah, so going back to the presentation, just to wrap this up here, I know we're, we're running a bit late on time here, but uh, let's just talk about one last thing, Visualize, which I'll go over in detail on the six. So, uh, so what we're going to do is uh, spherical and uh, stereoscopic cameras. And so this is basically if you're trying to set up for VR. And, you know, I'm sure everybody has seen something like this before. If you take off your 3D glasses during a movie, uh, it's the same thing. So we can actually create these environments. And when you wear a, a VR headset, it's all in 3D. And just really cool new output for Composer um, for kind of the, the new wave of, of VR technology. And, um, yeah, so we create our 3D, our 3D uh, environments. And then for the VR headset, actual 3D. So we'll we'll dive a little bit more into that um, on the 6 again, but uh, just to kind of give you a teaser of, of things that I would say are, are on the way, but they're here. Um, Source Pack 0 has been released. Okay. So we've um, got a couple upcoming sessions. So next Friday we have a simulation, um, what's new? 
uh, for 2018. So that's going to start at 11. That's next Friday. And then we have our webinar Wednesday, which is uh, the true power of Solix Visualized. That'll be December 6th. So uh, what we didn't have time to really cover, all that new stuff that they added in Visualize in the session, we'll go ahead and make up for that. And on the 6th, uh, it's not going to be all what's new. It's going to be what you can do with the software. Uh, and then we'll just throw some additional stuff in there from the VR, from the what's new. OK. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, again, my name is Scott Woods, a product manager for our tech comms products here at Hawkridge Systems. And uh, here is our contact information if you guys have any questions.